Hi everyone, welcome to I See Melanie. In today's video, we'll be doing story time, the story of my recent weight gain and subsequent weight loss. I'll talk to you about what started it all off, how much I got up to, the reasons why, and how I turned things around and lost the weight. So I know everyone who goes through a weight gain, weight loss situation, the journey is different for everybody. We all have different bodies, but I just want to say that while I talk about my heaviest weight as not being ideal to me, I understand for some people that might be their goal weight. We're all different. We're all different shapes and sizes. We all have different body chemistries. So it's not a matter of saying one weight is good or bad. It's just I'll be talking about how I viewed things from my experience. So be warned, I will be showing the pictures of the scale, my scale, before and after pictures and all that kind of stuff. So let's get into it. Let's talk about some numbers. So I am a petite lady. I am only 5'3". So when I gain weight, it is very visible and very noticeable on my body. In terms of my body shape, I have an hourglass figure. So I have big hips, big bum, thick thighs, small waist. Bust goes in and out depending on how heavy I get. But I definitely have an hourglass figure. And I actually quite love it. Um, you know, when I do gain weight, it all really, you know, goes to the bottom of my body. It makes shopping for clothes very difficult, but I love having an hourglass figure. In terms of age, age is definitely a factor when you're trying to lose weight. I am what I call a high-end millennial. I'm a geriatric millennial, okay? So you Google it and figure out how old I am. Okay, in terms of my weight, my set weight, so the weight that I am generally the weight that I always kind of gravitate back to is about 137 pounds. And there's a bit of a range, like sometimes I could be 135, sometimes I could be up to 141, but like 137 is the weight I find myself in most often. In recent years, I've gone as low as 124 pounds. That was at a time when I was very busy, I was eating very well, and I was going to the gym all the time. But, you know, sometimes I can get up to about 146, 144. The heaviest prior to this most recent weight gain that I've ever been, and I've only been this twice in my life, was 150. But this weight gain got me up to 164, which I never really thought I would get up to because I'd never been that high of a number before. Now on to my diet. And when I use the word diet, I mean that in the most literal sense of the word. I mean the collection of food that I typically eat. So I eat, I would say, kind of a mixed diet, an average diet. I eat healthy and I also eat, you know, the bad food, the fun stuff. So on a typical day, I eat a lot of soups. I make a lot of homemade soups. I love it. I make a lot of chicken and I, I'll eat that with rice or vegetables, maybe even fruit. I have eggs cottage cheese, sardines, yogurt, all sorts of things like that I would eat on a regular basis. But I also enjoy McDonald's every so often. I like going to restaurants. I don't shy away from, you know, bad food. Like that food is fun. I like eating it. I also have a bit of a sweet tooth. I really haven't gotten over my obsession of candies. I thought at my grown age, I would be over it, but I love candy as much as any six-year-old. So I eat chocolate bars. I have Sour Patch Kids. I also like donuts. The other day, I had two fancy donuts for dinner. So yeah, I'm a mix of both sides. In terms of what I drink, in the morning, I'll have black coffee. I make it on my stove, on my mocha pot. I'm not really like a Starbucks type of person. I'll have a lot of um, herbal teas, water, and I'm, I'm obsessed with sparkling water. Cherry bubbly is my favorite. Every so often, I do like my sugary drinks. So I will have a Coke, a Sprite, Dr. Pepper, or whatever. And when I have those, I have the full sugar versions. I cannot get over the taste of aspartame. So I don't drink Diet Pops or even like, you know, Coke Zeros and things like that. I don't like artificial sweeteners. In terms of alcohol, I drink dry red wines. I'm not a fan of hard liquor. Like I'll, I'll have a cocktail every so often, but that's never my first choice. 
And over the past two years or so, I've been drinking a whole lot less than I was before. I would say before I would probably drink maybe about a bottle of wine a week. Now I have maybe two glasses, three glasses every month. I really cut the alcohol down a lot because it it interferes with my cardio. If I drink, I can't go on a bike ride or go to the gym and, you know, do burpees and stuff the next day. So I don't really drink that much anymore. So what was the catalyst that popped off this weight gain? It was the pandemic, the mixture of gyms not being open, working from home, door dashing all the time. It was all these things combined that really threw me off kilter. What helped me turn things around? The exact opposite, eating less and better, exercising, and ironically, actually contracting COVID was a big boost along the way. So let's talk about life before this weight gain started. So I am a gym girly. I love going to the gym. I love exercising. In particular, I love doing cardio. So a bit about my history. Uh, when I moved to my condo, it was a very long time ago, 2009. At that point, I got myself a membership to a spin studio and also to the gym. So I started going to the gym, like not really regularly, but I went. In 2011, that's when I started running for the first time. By 2014, I started going to the gym on a regular basis, so at least three to four times a week. And in 2017, I really upped things. I started going to the gym five, six, sometimes seven days a week. By the time 2018 rolled around, at that point, I'd done several different races. So I did a 5K race, I did two 10K races, and I did four half marathons. So I really enjoy running, even though I'm not the best at it, but I really, really like it. In 2019, I became a, I go to the gym in the morning before work girly. So I really love that because I'm not a morning person. I'm a night owl. So being able to wake up and get myself out of the house to work out at 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning, I was so proud that I was so regimented and disciplined. And by the end of 2019, I became a, I go to the gym before work and right after work girly. So I was doing double headers. <laughs> so uh, again, I was very proud and I wasn't tired or anything. I just really liked having that discipline. So at the gym, I would do spinning. I run the treadmill. I would do heavy weights. I do light weights. I would do a lot of group fitness classes. So I know a lot of you are familiar with um, body pump and body combat. So those are classes um, brought on by Les Mills. And so I would do those classes, but my favorite Les Mills class is called Body Attack. So Body Attack is a high intensity cardio class. So it's it has elements of, you know, corny style 90s aerobics, but it has a lot of plyometrics. It's very, very challenging. I've been doing it for nine years. I did it on Saturday. I'm doing it tomorrow night. It's hard. It's very challenging. So when I go to a class afterwards, I feel so strong, I feel so like energized, and I'm proud of myself every time I go there. I love that class, I'm gonna do that class until I no longer can do it. So 2020 comes around, I'm active, I'm going to the gym, but then of course, March 13th, everything is shut down. So I'm working from home now, the gyms are shut down, I don't really have much recourse in that moment. Luckily, March is a time that I usually start running for the season. So for a while, I was going on runs quite often. And I would go on walks at lunchtime and stuff like that too. But I didn't have any weights. And at that time, weights were just very difficult to come by. A lot of the stores just weren't carrying many. So I was able to snag um, two 10-pound dumbbells, which, you know, it was a good start, but it wasn't, you know, really that much. And I really miss my barbells. And so I made barbells. So I got two broomsticks. And for the weights, I got a collection of pop bottles, so like soda bottles, and I emptied them. And I made a light and a heavy barbell. So for the light barbell, I filled the pop bottles with bird seed. And for the heavy one, I filled them up with sand. So the light one was about 20-ish pounds. The sand one was about 60 pounds. So it wasn't like super duper heavy, but again, 
I was just doing what I could do, right? So I would use those weights. I would walk up the stairwell of my condo for a little extra cardio and to get out of the house. And I would exercise at home. I got the Les Mills app. So the same people who bring body attack, body combat, body pump and stuff. So they have an app. You can cast your phone to your TV and work out from home. So I did that. I have never been a fan of working out from home because, you know, I live in a condo in Toronto. It's small. So I'd have to clear everything out in my living room, put everything to the side to make space for myself to do these exercises. Also, I find I get really hot in my condo because my condo is hot just because I'm surrounded by all these different units. It was always very uncomfortable and the floors are laminate, so they're very hard. And yeah, I really hated doing it, but I didn't really have much of a recourse at that point. By June, I decided, okay, Melanie, why don't you buy a spin bike? So I got a spin bike, a sunny health and fitness one from Amazon, and I started spinning. So I actually, I'm not the biggest fan of spinning because I find if the music's not good or if I, if I don't like the vibe of the instructor, then I don't have a good time. So what I used to always do, even before the pandemic, I would just make up some choreography. I'd get a good playlist of songs I liked and I would just kind of spin freestyle. So I did that. And also Les Mills has this really cool immersive class where you um, just look at the screen and it's like an environment and it's like you're, you know, traveling through this virtual space. So I did that a lot. In July, 2020, I decided that I was going to ride a bike outside. So I'd always been really petrified of the idea of like riding in Toronto because the drivers can be kind of crazy. But it was actually the ideal time to start because the roads were emptier because lockdown was on and also at that time Toronto was building a lot of bike lane infrastructure and yeah so I did that I loved that and I still do it up until today when the colder weather came around I went back to the indoor workouts and some running and then by the time December came around and it got you know kind of wintry I took up winter running so I was determined again I really hate working out inside so I inside my house so I got winter running shoes. I had to get special, um, a special zip up to windbreak the cold air. So much gear is involved when you run in the winter time. But yeah, I was determined to get outside. And during this time, my diet was pretty much the same as it was previous. But admittedly, I was eating more and I just wasn't getting as many steps as I would you know, when I was working in the office and I would go on my walks on my lunch break and even the walks to the subway and all those little steps you get when you're going into an office. So the pounds did creep up on me. Um, it wasn't too, too bad. I went from 138. I started 138 in March and I went to 148. So I gained 10 pounds. But luckily, like I never got into like the whole sourdough making phase or I never really made anything crazy. I did go through a hot dog phase. I don't know why I was making hot dogs all the time. And yeah, I definitely wasn't eating the best. But, you know, it was lockdown. I had to have fun somehow. Right. <laughs> 2021 comes around and my diet is basically the same as it was before. I'm still eating a mixed bag of things. I'm working out from home, but I think maybe a little bit less. And I was very preoccupied with trying to find a new job at that time. So, so there were some nights where I just did not have the capacity to work out. And by the time June came around, I got up to 155 pounds. So this is seven pounds in about six months. At that weight, I obviously, I could see that I, I looked different. Um, but at that time, you know, I was wearing a lot of sweatpants and I was wearing joggers and things like that, loose t-shirts. So I didn't really feel it so much, but there was a moment in June that really is one of those moments where I'm, I thought to myself, okay, you need to get control over this. And there are several moments that I'll talk about later on. So it's June. It's one of the nicest days we've had thus far. So I'm wearing a, a summer dress that I've worn for several summers, right? So on this particular day, I was going to break in some new Birkenstocks and I decided to walk myself to the ice cream store to get orange sherbet at Dutch Dreams. 
um, one time this man in the village told me that orange sherbet is an old lady's ice cream, but I still like it. Anyway, so I walked there and I walked back home. So the walk was eight kilometers. So I got a good ex, I got a good, you know, workout, a good walk in. And when I came back home, this might be like TMI territory. I don't really care. I'm telling you anyway. I, my, the inside of my thighs were burning me. They were burning me so badly. And, you know, I'm a thick girl. I have thick thighs, always will. My thighs always rub together, but they have never rubbed together like this. I've never felt pain from my thighs rubbing together before. And when I woke up the next day, it was even worse. And I said, Melanie, like, you got to get control over this because this is starting to affect the qual my quality of life. And so what I did, you know, going forward is that old trick they say to put some deodorant in between your thighs to help with the friction and deodorant will stay versus if you put lotion or something like that. And of course I wasn't used to it. So I go out wearing a summer dress or a summer skirt the next time, forget to do that, come home and I would be in pain. And every time that happened, and even every time I did remember and I put the deodorant there, I was like, you shouldn't have to do this, Melanie. Jumping to November, 2021. I have found that new job and I'm starting it. So it's a remote job. So I'm working from home once again. And I should mention Toronto was still pretty locked down. Toronto was opening and closing restaurants and gyms on and off. But overall, things were very locked down for most of the pandemic. Anyway, so yeah, so I'm starting this new job and it's pretty intense, right? So I have a lot of meetings, a lot of training, and some days went pretty late. And at that point, it was like so dark and depressing. I'm like, I don't, I don't feel like working out. So I was barely working out. Also, this job paid me a whole lot more money than any job I've ever had before. So the combination of being lazy and having more money meant that I got a serious DoorDash and Uber Eats habit. I was ordering way too much takeout. I would say in that last bit of 2021 and most of 2022, I was probably getting DoorDash like five or six times a week. It was bad. It was really, really bad. Like some weeks would be less, but a lot of weeks for five, six times. And I would get some, sometimes I get healthy food. Most times I did not get healthy food. And um, I also got a lot of desserts like Cinnabons and cheesecake slices from the Cheesecake Factory and stuff like that. Like it, I, I was doing it all to myself. I was eating way too much. Another moment where I realized that I really needed to get this weight under control was when I went to meet my coworkers in Silicon Valley. So now that I had to be out with people, I could not wear sweatpants or stretchy clothes. I had to find real clothes. And for me, no matter how slim or how heavy I get, Finding clothes is very difficult. When you have a small waist and really big hips, it's better than it was maybe 10, 15 years ago, but it's still very hard to find things that fit me. Luckily, I was able to find a dress from Winners. So that's Canada's version of TJ Maxx, essentially, that had an empire waist and like this built-in drawstring thing. And then I wore this other, this jersey dress. So it was stretchy. I got this from Old Navy 10 plus years ago. I wore that and I got a skinny belt and I cinched my waist and I got so many compliments from like random people <laughs> at the campus there in Mountain View. So it worked out pretty well. So anyway, the next day or the last day that I was out West, um, I booked the latest flight so I can spend some time in San Francisco because I've never been to San Francisco before. So I had my suitcase with me. And at that point, I didn't know about services like Bounce, like places where you can drop your suitcase off for the day while you, you know, meander a new city. So I was walking around San Francisco and San Francisco has some pretty serious hills. So I was walking around with this suitcase as well. And if I were to walk on those hilly streets now, even with a suitcase, I would be able to walk up them with no problem but this girl was huffing and puffing I had to stop several times like those hills I just did not have that same cardio capacity that I used to have and I'm a cardio girl I love cardio more than anything else and so that really bothered me too again I said to myself 
Melanie, you need to get a hold of this. Going back to the work trip, I ate so much during that time because these tech companies in Silicon Valley, their offices, they have so many different offices around that area. They call them campuses because they're big like a university campus. And inside each campus, there's food all over the place, like high end food, these like with chefs and everything like there was just so much food. And so um, one of the campuses that I went to, it had basically like a food court, very similar to what you'd find in a mall, all different types of cuisines. And you can eat and eat. One day I had two lunches um, and there's drinks all over the place. And because there's so many campuses, um, they have these bikes that you can bike to and from like each campus or you can walk there. But along the way, there are food trucks. So you just show them your badge. You can get a little snack. You can get a little drink. Like there was food all over the place. And with the group outings that we did as a team, my manager, just like she ordered so much food. We had so much food, food, so much wine. I ate so many calories on that trip. June 2022 came along and I'd signed up for a 10K race. Now, I haven't done a 10K race since 2013. That's because I always did half marathons because I touted myself as a runner. But I thought to myself, you know, don't don't push it. 10K will be fine. So I didn't practice as much as I should have. So that was partially my fault. But when I did go on runs, I felt the difference being that much heavier heavier than I was before. I really felt it like, you know, when you run, everything shakes, right? Everything bounces around. But this time around, my belly sides were bouncing around and my arms were bouncing too. And like, I don't care if somebody on the sidewalk sees my belly and my arms bouncing. Like I could not care less about that. But in terms of how that felt like physically, it's not nice to have things jiggling around when you're active because it's just uncomfortable, right? Like I'm used to my legs jiggling all around. That's fine. I don't care. But I didn't like I don't wear compression shirts and I'm not going to wear an armband, but it was bouncing. There my arms and my belly sides were bouncing a lot. Did not like that. Anyway, race day comes along. This was literally the worst 10k I have ever done in my entire life. I have done better 10Ks when I'm just doing it for fun, when I have no pressure. <laughs> it was terrible. And I really felt it. I did it with two of my friends and they finished like well before me and they were like calling and te or texting me saying, oh, Melanie, you're almost done. I'm like, yeah, give me 10 more minutes. I think I did it in an hour and 22 minutes or so, which is like super long. And again, it was one of those things where I thought to myself, when are you going to get it together, girl? Like, come on. By July 2022, I'd reached 164 pounds. So obviously I saw the trajectory, but even though I knew it was coming, like when I saw that number on my scale, I thought to myself, oh my God, you're 164 pounds. That was just like a number I just never fathomed I would get to. And again, that could be a perfect number for you or maybe that's your goal weight or whatever. But for me, again, with the history of my body, like I, I never got up to the 160s. And yeah, I, I felt it. I really did feel it. It did impact my life in many small ways, like literally every single day. November 2022 comes around and my contract's done. And at this point, I'm no longer afraid of COVID. Lockdowns like were all done. So I went back to the gym, which I was very, very happy about. But I was very cognizant of how this time around I'd have to work out different because I was in a heavier body. And I, again, I do a lot of high impact stuff. And so jumping around, doing tuck jumps and all this kind of stuff, running on the treadmill, you have to be cognizant about the amount of pressure you put on your ankles and your knees, right? So I took things very light. Like say, for example, if I went on, the, went on the treadmill, I would just walk, I put it on an incline and on, on a slow walking speed. And then I'd watch TV or YouTube videos and stuff like that. So that helped pass the time. I was able to use the weight machines like normal. Um, the only thing different now is because I was weaker and I'd have to use less pounds, less weight on it. But otherwise, I was free and clear to do that. When I got stronger, I went back to the squat rack. 
I would do sprints on the treadmill. I did jump rope. I used the Jacob's ladder. So if you don't know what that is, it is a machine that lets you do bear crawls on an incline. And it's an excellent cardio exercise that's low impact. I would do barbell complexes using light weights. And so that's also another great form of cardio, especially on days when you don't feel like jumping. So do clean and presses or push presses, combinations of those things. Great cardio exercise with a little bit of resistance. And then I would practice doing some of the body attack um, tracks on my own when the fitness studio was empty. I would just practice doing things because I didn't want to go to the actual class and, you know, kind of fumble things up. So I did that. Then by the time December came around, I purchased a Black Friday deal for Orange Theory. So if you don't know, Orange Theory is a classroom based um, workout exercise where you do um, half of it is on the treadmill. So it's running on inclines, all different types of things. And then you do part of it using the rowing machine and some light weights for resistance. And this introduced me to heart rate monitors because I'd never worked with a heart rate monitor before. And so when I was running on the treadmill, I was pretty good at it. Um, my heart rate was way higher than everybody else's. And so the instructor came to me by me. She's like, oh, are you okay? Are you faint? I'm like, no, like I'm taxed because running is always hard, but I feel fine. Um, yeah. So again, I had no idea about heart rate monitors and I got obsessed with it. And luckily at Christmas time, my dad bought me this Fitbit. And so I've been using it ever since. So again, it keeps track of my steps. Um, the distance I walk and my heart rate and a bunch of other things. But to me, the most important thing, thing I get out of this is my heart rate. So like right now, what's my heart rate? 87. Okay. So yeah, I use that to keep track of when I'm in cardio, when I'm in peak mode. And yeah, I, I love knowing what my heart rate is because that lets me know like how many active minutes I've gotten throughout the day. Steps. I don't really care about steps because I do a lot of uh, walking and I do a body attack class now. And so I know I'll always get my steps in, but the heart rate, that's the most important, I think. In December 2022, I had another moment where I thought to myself, oh my gosh, Melanie, again, what have you done to yourself? <laughs> so it was a day where I had to do some last minute Christmas shopping and it was freakishly cold in Toronto. So I had to wear my parka that day. So I typically wear my parka maybe five times a winter because I don't really find it to be that cold to warrant wearing it, but it was very cold that day. So anyway, I put on my parka and this parka I got in January, 2020, and it was always like a little bit tight, but manageable. Anyway, now that I've gained so much weight, it was super tight. So going back actually to February, 2022, there was one time where I went to the lake for some art installation at nighttime. So it was super cold. Wearing the parka, I was able to zip it up, but I felt like a sausage. Like it was so tight. I could barely like move my legs to, to walk. Like it was ridiculous. And I felt kind of ashamed that day. I was so mad. But anyway, jumping to now or jumping to December, 2022, I can't even zipper up this parka all the way. So the zipper, you can zipper it from the top and the bottom. And so I had to let loose the zipper at the bottom just so it can fit on my hips. And again, I was so, so, so mad at myself for one, because of the way it was zipped up, all the cold air would go up anyway. So it kind of defeats the purpose of a parka. Also, it looks very weird. And, you know, I barely wear a parka. The parka was $400. I'm not buying a new parka. So, yeah, again, another moment when I realized, like, what I have done to myself. But I was on the path to get things going in the right direction at that point. February 2023 comes around and I'm at 162 pounds. I was going to the gym one day and I decided to take some pictures as a reference point to see, you know, me at a bigger state. So I took these pictures and at the time I had no idea I'd be posting them on the internet. If I'd known, I would have, uh, you know, made myself look a little bit better that day, but whatever, I don't really care. <laughs> 
So at this point, I am ready to go back to body attack class. So I go to my first class in February. I see my instructor who I haven't seen in three years. He runs up to me, gives me a big hug. And yeah, and so I told him, you know what? It's been a while. I haven't been here. And he said it took him quite some time as well to get used to doing body attack class and that I'll, I'd be okay. And I am okay. Still doing it, still rocking it, still loving it. At this point, I would say my diet was getting marginally better. It wasn't perfect. I was still getting takeout, still eating candy and stuff, but I was cooking more and I was steadily losing weight. So things were going in the right direction. June, 2023, I catch my first case of COVID. I got it at a piano bar on a Saturday night. Sunday night, I start to feel a little bad. Monday night, I test positive. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I was pretty much incapacitated. Thursday, I feel a bit better. I'm able to go on a short walk. Friday, I'm able to go on a longer walk. Saturday, I'm able to go on a long walk and a bike ride. So now I'm good. And I should mention, like when I'm sick, I don't really eat that much. So that Monday to Wednesday, I wasn't eating very much. And then Saturday comes along and I noticed that my taste is pretty much gone and my sense of smell is way off kilter. So every savory type of food that I ate, it smelled either like vinegar or like smelling salts, which is disgusting. So during that time, I wasn't really eating. So probably for maybe like three days or so because everything was so gross. I, like I was eating, but when I did, I ate healthy things because I'm like, there's no point in eating junk food now or like, you know, fatty foods right now because I can't taste it anyway. And from then, I just like regularly started losing weight, like getting COVID. You know, no one wants to get COVID, but like it really kind of helped me in a way. By October 2022, like I really felt much smaller. My clothes fit me much better there was a noticeable difference. And then, you know, things just, I kept on going to the gym like usual, still eating a mixed bag of stuff. But then by, I would say February this year, I really cut out the takeout. Like no, no takeout. Like if somebody treated me to a restaurant, I would eat. And when I go to restaurants, I don't eat from the, the light fare menu. I eat my full fat stuff. The other day, I went to Red Lobster. Red Lobster is not my favorite place, but when I do go there, I always get fried shrimp, Walt's favorite, and French fries with extra ketchup and extra tartar sauce. So again, I'm no stranger to fatty foods, but yeah, no takeout. So most of the food I eat, I've made. So again, I, a lot of soups, chicken, cottage cheese, sardines, eggs, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Again, I still do eat bad food. Like again, the other day I had donuts for dinner, but on the whole, mostly home cooked food. By April, 2024, I got down to 137 pounds. So my set weight, and I was very, very happy. So what I did is I went to the gym in the same spot, same position. I took pictures similar to that of February, 2022. Um, and yeah, as a comparison, I'm just a lot smaller and a lot more like the person that I knew. And I'm, I'm going to say this at the risk of sounding way melodramatic, but this is how I felt when I was 164 pounds. I almost, I didn't recognize myself. I felt like somebody else. And I know that sounds crazy, but you know, when you do your hair different, right? If I go from this hair to braids or my natural hair, for the first couple of days or the first day, I feel kind of like weird when I look in the mirror, like, oh, who is this person? Like, oh yeah, it's me. Obviously, I know, I know it's me. But when I was that big, like I just didn't associate myself with that size. I, I just didn't. And so getting back to the, you know, the size that I'm used to being meant so means so much to me. And yeah, I just feel more comfortable in my skin. And that might sound superficial or you know, something else, but I'm being real. I'm happier now that I'm at the size that I typically am. And like, I'm going to try to lose five pounds by the end of the year. Again, not a lot. So now it's September um, 24th. So <clears throat> three months. 
Um, I'm happy at the weight I am, but yeah, I would like to lose a few pounds of fat. So I'm going to try, but again, that small weight goal is me being realistic because again, even like with this, I knew I wanted to get back to my set weight. I actually didn't think it would take me 14 months to get here, but it did, which is fine. And yeah, I would say losing weight, um, you know, when there's a four at the front of your age is a lot more difficult than it is in your 30s because I lost, well, I lost 19 pounds when I was 35, so not as much as 28 or 27, but I lost 19 pounds in five months, no, four months. It was a lot easier. Um, so, you know, whatever, it's fine. Like, I, I knew I was, I was going to lose it eventually. I do need to clean up my diet a bit, even like today. I had my dinner. See, I'm so I'm so terrible. My dinner was plantain chips and three little packages of sesame snaps. That's not that's not good. That's not good. So I need to cut out the candy or the sweets in particular. So, yeah, so that is my weight loss journey, guys. It was really just a matter of diet and exercise and, and discipline and structure. So yeah, that's it. I will be doing some other videos kind of going into more of the minutia of what I did and maybe that could help some of you guys out. But anyway, I would love to know if you have been through a similar situation. If you have any thoughts, leave it in the comment section. We can start discussion over there. So thank you for watching me here on IC Melanie and I will see you next time. Like, share and subscribe and you have a great day. Bye.